Hey. What's going on guys? Hope you're all doing well. Now for today's video, I wanted to talk about an unused Velociraptor attack, or actually a string of attacks that would have led to a lot of build-up and tension in Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom that for some reason didn't get used. While none of the actual attack scenes or kills, there are kills actually, that none of them visually take place in this unused material, they do mention the aftermath of what happened and how it was supposed to build up to a scary meeting between Owen and Blue in the movie. This is a short section of backstory that I found in the film's junior novelization that would have really made a difference in the final cut of the film in my opinion, and it even looks like the edit that they went with, you know, the movie we all got to see, kind of played off of this little bit of trivia. So in the second movie of the Jurassic World trilogy, which I'll just call JP5 or Fallen Kingdom for short from here on out, there exists a brief scene once Owen and Claire land on the island that actually was supposed to go over how deadly the last remaining Velociraptor was. Now over the last few years, surrounding stories have actually gone out of their way to bring up other raptors that existed in the franchise during the time of Fallen Kingdom's events, with the VR story Jurassic World Aftermath even stating that a small pack of the animals were running wild on Isla Nublar directly before the events of JP5. And there was even a very strange green raptor rumor that there was an additional creature on the island running around with blue, but none of that was true. To make a long story short, it wasn't any of these dinosaurs that the real movie wanted to go with, and instead, the kill scenes that were mentioned in the novelization, which was based directly on a draft of the JP5 script, by the way, went into detail explaining why this dinosaur in particular was causing so many problems. It looks like what they were trying trying to do is build up the last raptor audiences would have known about on the island, Blue, as a more dangerous and even Jurassic Park 1 inspired animal than what we left off from in the fourth movie. This scene takes place as soon as the characters get off of the plane and set foot on the island. They walk up to Ken Wheatley and begin talking about a whole bunch of stuff that isn't in the movie. To quote the book directly, a hundred men in a cargo ship don't come easy, Wheatley answered gruffly. Want to see a pile of money disappear? Try moving animals against their will. Claire noticed a tent with wounded men inside. What happened? This island happened, Wheatley said grimly. I've lost five men already. He turned to Owen. You can thank your Velociraptor pal for two of them. He strode on ahead and Owen gave Claire a look. They were both thinking the same thing. This isn't going to be easy. Now obviously the purpose of this scene was to build up the tension and mystery behind what had happened to Blue after the events of Jurassic World. And with the scene where Owen meets back up with the dinosaur on top of the Ford Explorer in Fallen Kingdom playing out like it did, it's kind of obvious to see that this was written as a sort of foreboding encounter that would have helped sell the meetup even more in the final version. Kind of like a, oh man, what's she gonna do sort of scene, you know, when you actually do see the meetup. What makes it even more interesting is the fact that this could explain why all of the mercy scenarios were on high alert and filled with tension in the movie, where one of them makes the fatal mistake of trying to tranquilize the dinosaur early, and we find out how those other guys may have met their end. Now there was a lot of live action material cut from the film, some of them you can even see brief glimpses of in the first trailer, and guys, Fallen Kingdom may not be the greatest Jurassic Park movie ever made, uh, you know, there's always problems with all of these films, but it has solid scenes of dinosaur attacks and proper tension that I think help make it stand out in comparison to some of the other entries in the series, and that goes especially for the next movie, Dominion in my opinion. And I think if they had added this scene in a live action context where we we take a look at how bloodied up and wounded some of the men already were on the island before we saw Blue, and Wheatley directly mentioned that Blue was responsible for killing two of those guys, then we could have had a darker and more mysterious aura around the scene that they eventually showed us. And the way I always picture this whenever I read over this material is that you kind of a camera pan over to a whole bunch of bloodied up guys with medics working on wrapping up wounds and maybe even a couple of body bags, and it would probably make that hunter really upset and even build the tension between him and the rest of the good guy team that we see in the movie. Now, as far as JP5, goes, there was a ton of deleted content that didn't make it into the final release, and a lot of people remember that when the first trailer came out, Colin Trevorrow even stated that something like the first 52 or 57 minutes or something were only 
shown in that trailer for the film. But in the final release, the Brachiosaurus dies at around the 45 minute mark and that was after all of the stuff from the trailer. Meaning that a ton of stuff was cut from the movie on the island. And it's not really that hard to guess if a scene like this happened to be one of them. If they didn't film it, that would be weird, but this is based on the script, so there has to at least have been some sort of inkling of material that was left on the cutting room floor. Speaking of which, that's not the only thing that this short part of the novelization has that's different from the final release. There's even more exposition regarding the characters and Isla Nublar in general that I wouldn't be shocked if they too were cut from the theatrical version of the movie. Again, to quote the book directly, Mr. Lockwood takes his humanitarian efforts seriously, Wheatley said with a tight grin. Woe to the unprepared. Zia and Franklin climbed down from the plane. Wheatley spoke to Zia first. The paleo-veterinarian. You go to some kind of school for that? Annoyed by this question, Zia just said, I did, in a flat voice. Wheatley turned to Franklin. And you're the computer guy. Systems architect, Franklin corrected him. And which one of you is the raptor wrangler? Owen stepped off the plane wearing a hoodie and plastic sunglasses. Animal behaviorist, he said, taking an instant dislike to Wheatley. And you're what, the great white hunter? Expedition facilitator, he said. This way, he grunted, leading them over toward the base camp tents. Owen looked at the volcano with concern. Hammond didn't think the volcano would be a problem when he built this place? It's been dormant for a thousand years, Claire explained. Experts swore it was extinct. Experts, Wheatley sneered with contempt. How much time do we have before she blows up? Owen asked, nodding toward it. Our volcanologist says it could happen any time now, Wheatley said, and the tremors are getting more frequent. So just right there in the span of like literally two pages or a page and a half, we go over so much little bit of material and information that would have made a lot of people stop asking questions in the final release and I don't know man I just don't understand why stuff like this was cut and there's even more material that was left from the final film that I thought sounded and looked extremely cool you'll remember that one of the deleted scenes actually had the Indoraptor playing with a human skull in its cage where the villains Eli Mills and Gunnar Eversall go over the fact that it lured a person in there and killed them which would kind of set up you know the whole scene where Wheatley gets his arm ripped off at the end of the movie it was something like three Three trank darts are what you need to take the Endoraptor out and like tranquilize it, which makes sense because it's got the same sort of armored skin as the Indominus Rex did in the last movie. So, so you know, for actual bullets to fall off of it and a little needle to pierce it, yeah, you'd probably need more than just one trank dart like we saw in other Jurassic Park stuff. And Wheatley didn't know any of that information. So again, it was kind of a build up and an execution that was cut from the movie, just like this Velociraptor scene. All in all, I think this would have been extremely cool to put in the movie and I would love to see Bayona come back and do some sort of director's cut of the movie because again another scene that was cut showed the death of Iris who was Maisie's nanny in the film a lot of people were like hey how come she just sort of disappears like Nick Van Owen in the Lost World she's nowhere to be seen after a certain point in the movie well that's because she's supposed to get killed by the Indoraptor and they even filmed it and dude I would love to see them add this stuff back in if it's still available. The scene with the Velociraptor buildup in particular is something very fun, and I don't know how it looked in live action, or I mean, maybe they just skimmed over this completely, but I would love a longer version of the film, especially if it built onto the more scary and Jurassic Park, you know, one and two sort of imagery and tension that was really lacking from a lot of other material. Anyways, guys, these are all just my own thoughts and opinions on the subject matter. What do all of you think about this material not being added back into the final release and do you think we could ever see it in some sort of deleted scene form in the future now whatever your own thoughts and opinions happen to be i'd love to hear them in the comments down below now before i go i'd like to thank all of my game wardens and engine executives as well as all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. You've all helped my channel immensely, and I'm incredibly grateful for all of that support. Now I'd like to thank you all for watching today's video and hope that you enjoyed the content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like and hope that you all consider subscribing. I'll see you all in the next video, guys, and as always, take it easy.